since we're here already let's try to uh yeah read the watermarks on my on my ledger yeah ledger ledger turn on the headlights maybe inside you see a set of steering levers a radio microphone a pull-out toolbox and the soft glow of the fuel preheater gauge um kim how do i turn on the headlights all right ready i turn you press start it's next to the preheater okay you turn i press start the dashboard lights up with orange glow the rounds per minute gauge jumps and the engine of the caprice canoe comes to life with a whiny growl that wasn't a growl dude <laughs> that was something else like a leopard waking from its sleep yawning and roaring at the same time um press the button the lights unfold Ooh. with a little click casting electrical light onto the ground before the vehicle there you go i'll turn them off from the remote once you're done we just need to stand in front of the machine now Ooh, you have a remote cool Okay, let's see, let's see. As you hold your ledger's clip under the headlamp, an iridescent hologram appears. A street grid and the veins of a great river. A familiar sensation washes over you. Street grid and the veins of a great river. There she is. Revachol West. There's a note of pride in the lieutenant's voice. Around the borders of the watermark are dozens. No. Hundreds of micro perforations. Um, look at the shimmering street grid. The rectangular watermark is overlaid with the logo of the RCM, RCM. and yet the major arteries of Revachol are all recognizable. They shimmer in the Kanema's headlights. Ooh, is this a map? Wait, look around you. A rat brazenly darts past you and disappears amongst the stop lorries. In the distance, a child somewhere shrieks. A woman reprimands her in a voice no quieter than the child's cry. Ah, Martinez. Martinez. Where are we on this? Let me see. He takes the ledger for a moment and, it, and in, inspects it right here his finger near the top of the map on a segment of coast jutting out on into the great ocean seems nice no it does not <laughs> okay look at the perforations there are many of them and they are divided into three separate rows Three separate rows. Mm, tally up the different rows. The first row has 18 dots. Um, wait. What does perforation mean? Uh, help me Google. Oh, so it's like holes, just holes. 18 dots, so 18 holes. Hmm. What do they mean here, though? Uh, what about the next one? The next is the longest. It runs all the way around the border, and then some. Count them individually. You count 216 perforations. Considering that nice, large number, a wave of pride washes over you. Though you can't say why, precisely. Hmm. Um, what about the last row? The last row has three perforations. Three? That's it? That's it. Hey, Kim. What do all these holes mean? 
Those are perforations. They represent your record as an officer of the RCM. They are your statistics, as it were. I should have guessed you'd keep a record. Officers often do. Let's take a look. Ooh, so my stats. Alpha male officers who are proud of their numbers often do. It's meant. The first row represents your years of service. 18 years. Okay, not bad at all. What did you do before you volunteered? 18 years, so I've been a cop. No, a detective for 18 years, huh? Wait, 18 years I've done this? That's what it says. I might have guessed even longer based on your age. What did you do all those blissful years of your youth? Ooh, <laughs> I walked the land telling whores and liars of the end to come. There are 9,855 days remaining. Hmm. I don't really know. Do you really think I have any idea? Fair point. Let's move on, shall we? <laughs> I feel that uh, that was the most logical answer. <laughs> this next row, the one that wraps all the way around, is your number of closed cases. Closed is good. It means finished. You've got, let's see. Okay. Wow, more than 200. Ooh. That's, that's a good number, right? So I've closed 200 cases. Well, I'm, I'm not such a bad detective after all, huh? So the first one is my years of service. And the second one is my completed cases. Is that a lot? It's quite a lot. Even for someone who's been on the force for nearly two decades. Usually, clearing more than 10 cases a year puts you in the 90th percentile of all RCM officers. Oh, dang. Hmm. Eight years and 216 cases. Hmm. So, on average, I took up and finished about, I don't know, 10. 10 cases a year, yeah. <laughs> so you're saying I used to be a super cop. I used to be good at some solace, I guess. What's the last number? Oh, wait. I don't think I can ever re-become this person. I used to be good at some solace, I guess. What's the last number? Hmm, I wonder. What caused me to to lose my memories though? Because there is not some there's not something that you forget overnight. You know? Even with uh, uh temporary amnesia, I guess. I don't know. I don't know. I was just thinking. Right. Those are your confirmed kills. Oh. You've got precisely three perforations there. So I've killed three. Three people. Hmm. So I'm a killer. For an RCM officer, especially Precinct 41, which is in the Jamrock Quarter, it's rather um, tame. I mean that in a good way. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. There are certain officers who treat their kills like some kind of ghoulish game. If they do happen to solve a case, it's usually by accident. <laughs> Ooh, okay. It's obvious the lieutenant doesn't think very highly of these officers. Hmm. But it seems as though you are, or at least were, one of the good ones. So we have that to be thankful for. Hmm. 
Have you ever killed anyone, Kim? Yes. Okay. Um, how do you handle the strain? Everyone has their own method of coping. Some more effective or self-destructive than others. He gives you a meaningful look. Hmm. Personally, I find it helps to keep up a few hobbies. Uh, like what? Oh, this and that. Let's not get into it now. Maybe I should find a hobby? Why not gardening? You've already got the gloves. Oh yeah. Wait, <laughs> why am I still wearing these? Okay, thanks for this. The lieutenant nods. Let's go. Right. I'll go turn off the lights. Okay. Should we do this, Annette? Okay. We go to Annette and then we return to our room to clean ourselves up. And what else can we do? It's already getting late though. Past 5 p.m. We could talk to Kim about this. Okay, oh, wait, what? Oh, this is my profile. Name unknown, rank unknown, superstar cop. Two. Sorry, cop. Two. Boring, cop. One. Wait, does this update over over time, or is this my my previous uh, profile? Hmm. Fascist one. <laughs> Ultra liberal one. Zero honor. Huh. Interesting. Okay. Wait. Let's uh let's take these off for now. Oh. The bullet from the from the corpse. The bullet mushroomed out on impact. It now looks more of a fanciful jacket button than something that could pierce skin, flesh, and bone. Interact. The bullet is safely sealed away in a plastic bag bearing the RCM stamp. Kim has filled out the label on the bag with the item number, case number, and date and location the bullet was found. Hmm. What do I do with you, bullet? What? I said, what do I do with you, bullet? Well, if I was the bullet, which I'm not, I would say, find the weapon that shot me. Good idea. If we find who owns it, we will have likely found who used it, possibly to kill our victim. Mm -hmm. In conclusion, the more we know about this bullet of yours, the better. Can I inspect the bullet closely? The jacket of the bullet is made of a yellowish metal. It has blossomed out to reveal a dark gray core. The base of the bullet is close to five millimeters in diameter. Uh, look at the jacket. You can just about make out a few strations near the base of the bullet. Little hairlines, linear. It feels standard. Standard, okay. And the core? It's quite destroyed. Some of the fragments are still lodged in the wound. Ew. What can you say about the bullet so far? What? Wow, I actually know this. It's a jacketed bullet close to 5 millimeters in diameter. A jacketed bullet? Okay. It would have been shot from a military grade breech loading rifle. Not from a muzzle loader, like those typically found on the streets of Martinez. Military grade rifle. Highly unusual. 
The people of Revachol haven't carried breech-loading weapons like this for nearly half a century. Hmm. Why is that, I wonder? Even the RCM uses ordinary injected conical bullets. This is strange. Very strange. I like this, officer. Strange means unique. Unique means incriminating. We need to find a gun that shot it. Ooh, he's getting excited now. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Try to determine what type of weapon, sh weapon shot the. What type of weapon shot this? Hmm. Hand eye coordination. 17% chance. It's a it's a white check. We can uh, we can do this again sometime. Let's try to roll. Let's roll. You can't remember what happened last week. What makes you think you're going to remember arcane firearm models? Yeah, it was worth a try, I guess. Uh, feel the bullet through the bag. The squashed bullet has some sharp edges where the jacket has split open. It feels cold, even through the bag. You wouldn't ordinarily have cause to handle jacketed bullets. The citizen's militia uses cast bullets only. Little pebbles of metal loaded from the muzzle, usually in a cartridge. Mm -hmm. Alright. Um... Okay. Let's go to a net. Hello, hello. Hi, here Ace again. Detective. Are you here for more books? Ooh, I'm an Ace Detective. Hell yeah. Um, still low though. Because you know each other. Oh. She's been talking to you so openly because you've talked before. Oh, hang on. So you know me? We've met before? Yes, I stand in this spot all the time. How long have I been here, though? Hmm. Couple days, couple weeks? You've been running around all week without your shirt on, sir. Oh, shit! Telling people about being a star or something. I don't really understand who those stars are. Okay, that explains everything. <laughs> All week. So I've been here for a week, maybe? Or longer than that? So whatever happened to me, whatever is happening to me, the, the state that I'm in right now, uh, it, it's been happening to me for a week now. At least a week. Did I ever talk to you? Of course, you stopped by a few times. You certainly look better than the last time I saw you. Well, thank you, I guess. Well, I have I have my shirt on for once. Uh, thanks. I'm trying. Yeah, I can see. You don't have party eyes anymore. Party eyes. Hmm. Party eyes. Party eyes. Yes, of course. That makes sense. Party eyes? You know, like a cat in the dark, all big and wide eyed. <laughs> it certainly looks odd on a man. Whoa. Was I on some kind of hallucinogenic stuff? <laughs> Okay. The swiveling eyes of a loony drug addict. That is what she meant. You were probably going into. Yep. Yep. Fuck yeah. You should get some party eyes right now. Snap those sequins on you, boy. Uh. <laughs> Does that mean I've been partaking in narcotics? Hmm. Should I. Should I talk about this to a young girl? Oh 
baby, that's not what you have to worry about. Worry about the important thing. So, why did you tell me you knew me to begin with? I didn't know I had to do that. Um... Okay, well, thanks. I've learned something about myself today. I'm glad I could help you, sir. Alright, bye. We can... We can check out this door. Equip a flashlight in low light areas. Got it. This is Playsans. Playsans? That's your name, right? Welcome to Crime, Romance, and Biographies of Famous People. My name is Playsans. Hello. Be welcome, and please take responsibility for the energy you bring into this space. Oh. <laughs> Before we before we go on, you seem to be well off enough. Can you give me some money? I feel there won't be an opportune moment to ask later. Um Should we try this? <laughs> oh well, why not? Sir, don't be ridiculous. I certainly will not give you money. I would be doing you a grave psychic disfavor. One has to earn one's success, even if one is a police officer. Handouts are nothing but manipulation. All they do is make you dependent. Somewhat true, yeah. Certainly there are good things to be said about dependence. Hmm. It would forge ties between us working people, good practice for fighting our common enemy. You misunderstand me, I'm a powerful feudal lord, I demand tribute. This is about traditions. But damn, you're right. What kind of a business relationship would that, would that kickstart? Excuse me, I don't even know why I said that. A lapse of professionalism that does not represent my values. Hmm. <laughs> uh... Let's try this. <laughs> now, hey there. Sounds like someone isn't taking responsibility for the energy they bring into this space. Oops. Tribute? Power? These are not the traditions we're used to in this part of the world. Alright. Well... That's your opinion. So, are you the owner of this store? I am! The proudest owner of our little shop of culture. Her voice, high-pitched, sounds familiar. You've talked to her. Yep. Um, your daughter is the one standing outside the store, right? Annette, yes, my daughter. I hope she wasn't slacking off again with her nose in science fiction. Tell me, was she at her post doing her job like a proper girl? Hmm. Uh, uh, yes, of course. Wonderful. Did you talk to her? Yes. Great. On a scale of one to ten, how compelled were you to buy books after talking with her? Hmm. I'm not going to grade a human being. I don't do that. Hmm. If I say this, it'll help. I don't know. If I say this, the daughter, Annette, will be forced to, I don't know, keep on, keep on being outside, in the cold, I don't know, for hours, uh, hours a day. 
just standing there <laughs> huh hmm I'm not going to grade a human being I don't do that Um, sure, uh, sure, sure. Let's let's say ten. She's certainly very polite and helpful. My precious, her dedication brings joy to my heart. If you have children, I hope they turn out as great as my Annette. Hmm. All this pressure. All this pressure has made her really anxious. You know she's been chewing her nails. God! Ugh! I've told her not to do that. It's such a disgusting habit. She'll get over it. Anxiety is a part of life. I mean... You, you could do something about it. Like, you know... Uh... Give her... A le... Um... A less... Like... Give her a job that she really, really likes to do, not just be forced to do, you know. I don't think she can do anything about it, maybe. She can, if she has enough willpower. This is what's called growing pains. Life isn't easy. Life doesn't give breaks. Ooh, tough love. <laughs> Come on, ma'am. It's obvious she can't do anything about it. You are placing an unnecessary burden on a young child. Yeah. Yeah, you're right, Kim. That is true, and obviously the will of the market, but maybe make an exception for your daughter. She stands stiff and severe, silently fuming. Ten or so seconds pass without change. She's contemplating? She's looking for one, but there simply aren't any good arguments for being an asshole. <laughs> oh no. Hold on. I need to invite her inside and apologize. She must be freezing out there. Why do I detect? Why do I not detect any sincerity in your words, ma'am? There. I don't know what to say to you. My husband, he tries to teach me business lessons. I have what my mother called a dull mind. All this stress. Hmm. She, she told me she doesn't go to school anymore. She's been too busy helping me here. So she studied at home this trimester. This is a temporary solution, of course. Temporary? For how long, though? I assure you, I of all people understand the importance of education. She will be back in school the moment the store takes off. Okay. The moment the store takes off. When, though? And hell freezes over? Never mind. It's not a good topic to get into. Hmm. Is she an only child? Yes, I'm afraid so. A real treat she is. It would be nice if she had... No, we couldn't have afforded more children really. Not in this economy. I don't know what to say to this. A glimmer of sadness blinks through the well-crafted exterior. Um, why not? We're quite busy people, you know, my husband and I. Quite busy. Children are a lot of work. You don't look like a father, so I don't expect you to understand. Well, I guess... Hmm. I'm sorry. I'm sure you do understand. 
is this husband Annette's father? Yes. My husband is a successful entrepreneur east of the river. If only he were more involved in the business we're running up here. No matter. Soon we'll both be off for Grand Couron. Wait, Grand Couron? What's that? It's a proper place to live. One of the most peaceful neighborhoods east of Jamrock. You may know it for its massive housing projects. Okay. Like the um, suburbs? Most of the buildings are empty at the moment. It's a great opportunity to get ahead of the crowds. Better times ahead for sure. Hmm. And your husband's also involved with the bookstore? He made the initial investment. Since then, he's been what you might call a silent partner. A silent partner? Super silent. Almost inaudibly so. Yeah, yeah. Uh, hmm. I wish we had the option of asking her where the husband is now. But... Alright, I had something else in mind. The woman looks aloof. Her features much softer. Occasionally, she glances at her daughter's silhouette. Oh, there she is. Okay. What if I want to buy a book? Then why are you talking to me? Everything is on the shelves to browse. Don't you feel compelled to buy anything? See those shelves there? Go. Be drawn. What types of books do you have? Ah, uh, we already asked this uh, earlier with Annette. All right, I'll take a look. She smiles and nods, seemingly relieved. Goodbye for now. Ooh, there's a second floor. All right. Book collects the national re recipes of Arda. They are all about lake trout. Old sports magazines tucked away in a dark corner. Hello, Annette. I'm sorry, sir. I can't talk right now. I'm very busy with my homework. I have so much homework now. Out right. of the rain and into the gutter. Mm, what are you doing now? Math. It's really difficult. Like, really. They say you need it to get rich. Better than standing outside in the cold, I guess. Math. Oh, oh, I found something while you were away. Oh? What is it? I thought this would fit you. Like, thanks for helping out. Not me. The city, I mean. Like a detective does. Whoa, Dick Mullins hat. Um, wait, where'd you get it? Just what Dick Mullen would ask. I got it from behind the curtains. I'm not really supposed to go there. Ooh. It's a, a detective hat. Yes, just like the one Dick Mullen wears all the time. You'll look way more serious with that. Right, I have to get back to my homework now, before Mum notices. Man, this is hard. Okay, well, good luck on your homework. You've got a hat. Ooh, plus one to encyclopedia. Booksmart. If anything, this wide-rimmed hat looks even better than the than the hat Dick Mullen wears. Dick Mullen is stupid. <laughs> Not even real. You're real. Your brain is real. Your real, real brain is inside the hat. Oh. Ooh. Not too shabby, eh? All right. Right, right, right. Um, do you want to say anything about my hat? Hi, Ace Detective. Are you here for more books? Okay. A small mountain of colorful board game boxes. There are numerous types of games for all ages. A lot of shelf space seems to be taken up by Wirral related merchandise. Wirral? What is Wirral? Uh, look through the pile of Wirral related items. An endless variety of source books, lore books, and codices litter the table. 
The topmost book is titled Welkin Compendium, 2nd edition. There's also a large hardbound tome with intricate cover art, The Hunters of Catawack, Boreal Creature Compendium, and a Pick Your Path adventure gamebook titled Tales of Wirral, Cavern of Velcrag. Mm. Books in a board game section? Who wants to read books? Um, anything that really catches my There's eye? There's a box that says Wirral, 3rd edition mega setting supplements module. The side panel notes, a fantastic adventure board game, new maps and miniatures. A sticker on it displays 25 real. 25. And I've got 60 cents. <laughs> that price is steep, but then it's the 3rd edition mega setting supplement. So it makes sense. Ooh, 3rd edition. Uh, Storykeep, what board games do you have here? Wonderful board games, sir. The Viticulturist is a classic for sure. Or perhaps you'd like Archipelagos of Insulinda, a very educational game for those interested in geography. Viticulturist. Hmm. Raubritter is a fun game of economic competition, but can get quite intense after a while. We have games for the whole family. You can play with your children. Rao Britter. <laughs> Is it like the monopoly of this game? <laughs> yes, kids, friends, chicks, I have all those. Hmm. I don't feel as if I have any kids. Friends are technically like family. Uh, yeah, could be. For playing with friends, I'd recommend Suzerainity. It's a civilization building game where you build a civilization, then set off to brutally colonize and repress other civilizations. It'll cost 12 real. 12 real? I don't have 12. Mm. So, what about all these we're out things? Lousy auras there. No, role playing games are popular among those types. You know, who are into those kind of things. Personally, I don't like it. Not at all. Oh, why not? I've heard they turn people into a cult enthusiast. <laughs> that they have rituals where they try to summon entities. Highly immoral stuff. Uh -huh. You can still buy them though. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Do you guys remember the... Um, when was the satanic panic? <laughs> Back in the 80s, I guess. Early 90s. Or, I don't know, late 70s. When... D and D was very very popular. <laughs> okay. The display rack is brimming with worn paperbacks featuring an extremely muscular, sword wielding barbarian on the cover. Nearly all the titles contain the word Hiemdal somewhere. Ooh, Hiemdal. Storekeep, tell me about the Muscle Man, <laughs> Muscle Man books. Oh, Man from Hjelmdal, a very popular series of adventure novels. They're awfully immoral and violent books. Why are they so popular? Blood and violence, scantily clad women, epic narratives, all those mystical things he encounters. They're bound to grab those with little imagination and nothing to do. Little imagination? Epic narratives? Little imagination, mystical things, little imagination. Shh. Mm. Sounds good. Which one should I start with? What does it matter? They're all the same. However, the customer is always right, they say. <laughs> if you're a novice of the series, I'd recommend Hjelm Dalaman, the man from Hjelm Dal. It's supposed to be a good introduction to the series. Nine. Nine real. Uh, look through the display. Rows and rows of Hiem Dalamen blur your vision. You make out some titles. Man from Hiem Dal and the Mammoth Riders. Man from Hiem Dal. Return to Hiem Dal. <laughs> and the Solipsistic. Man from Hiem Dal and the Hiem Dal Man. Oh, 
<laughs> Good God, how many are there? Maybe a hundred. Man from Hyomdal and the sages at the end of the world. Man from Hyomdal and the false god. Man from Hyomdal and the scorched earth. Man from Hyomdal, the Hyomdal colonies. Man from Hyomdal and the swamp beast. Man from Hyomdal and the snow crabs. <laughs> is, is is that all? Not even close. Oh shit! Man from Hyomdal still more. in hell. Man from Hyomdal and the forest of slaves. Man from Hyomdal under the lake. Man from Hyomdal, Hyomdal burning. There's even the trial of death, a pastoral combat game book set in the world of Hyomdal man, and so much more. Oh. Paint threshold. Do any of the books call out to me? A twinge at the back of your head makes you flinch. Your eye starts twitching. Oh? Uh, what is it? Your hand reaches toward a book with glossy cover art of the very muscular man from Hyomdal in chains kneeling in front of a staircase leading to a throne. A woman sits on the throne, leering at the man. Ooh. Between the throne and the Hyamdala man lies a bonfire, casting shadows on the wall. The shadow of the woman's headdress looks like a pair of devil horns. The title reads, Man from Hyomdal and the Devil Woman. Hmm, aren't all women devil women? <laughs> uh, uh, no, no, no. Hmm, interesting. The display rack before you is burdened under piles of Man from Hyomdal novels. Hmm. Okay. Gift box and molting candy. Oh. Ooh, what's behind the curtain? You see a set of tattered curtains blocking the way to another room. A strange cage like trinket dangles from the curtains. Cage like trinket. Excuse me, officer. The back room is strictly for employees only. Um, what's behind the curtains? Nothing. Now please go back to browsing the books. Don't you feel compelled to look at the books? The books are all you care about. Oh wow. She seemed defensive. She speaks almost as if she's trying to put a spell on you, urging you to buy more books. Well, that ain't gonna happen, lady, because I only got 60 cents. Oddly enough, the more she tries to draw you away from the curtains, the more alluring they become. Hmm. Examine the strange cage-like trinket. You see some kind of charm, an irregular polyhedron assembled from bones, sticks, and straw. Inside, a disturbing fish head with empty eye sockets stares at you. What? This is a traditional Seminese ward, meant to provide protection against ill luck, bad dreams, curses, and other supernatural scourges. Hmm. And who are the Seminese? Inhabitants of Ile de Fantôme, the Seminine Islands down south. Ile de Fantôme. Aside from poking at it suspiciously, there is nothing else to do with the fish head charm at this time. The curtains remain shut before you. Nothing to do with the charm at this time. So do we... Hmm. Maybe we'll look at it later. I don't want to pull the curtains just now. Uh, let's ignore. Thank you. 
These shelves are overburdened with books from the same series. You see the name Dick Mullen over and over. Dick Mullen. A couple of spook novels hide amidst all the detective books. Thrilling tales of spycraft and daring do. Storykeep, what's all this crime fiction? Oh, crime, robberies, murders, even sexual crimes. We're fortunate to have Dick Mullen and his stories to sort all that out. You're a, a police officer, apparently. You should buy all of these. They really do teach a person how to be a proper detective. Do they now? Crime fiction is a disgrace. An asinine misrepresentation of the physical attributes of the arduous everyday work of actual police officers. Hmm. These books greatly overstate the excitement of police work, glossing over how long it takes to actually follow up on leads and eliminate dead ends. Well, that is fiction, which means not real. What's more, they completely ignore the psychological hardships of year after year coming into contact with people during the worst days of their lives. Not a single mention of all the stress this work creates upon the officer's family. Detective fiction just doesn't tell the truth at all. Now, would you like a list of all the books found on the shelf? Uh... Sure. You see, Dick Mullen on the job. Get me Mullen. The stalwart adventures of Richard P. Mullen. <laughs> Dick Mullen and the murder in the orchard. The sordid affair of Dick Mullen. Dick Mullen. A killing is declared. Dick Mullen in the murder house. The final case of Dick Mullen. An obvious lie. Dick Mullen in the clock tower. The ordeals of Dick Mullen. Dauntless Dick, Dick Mullen's funeral pyre, the murder of Dick Mullen. <laughs> what? Dick Mullen dies? Oh no, turns out he fated to solve a case. Are there any more? Yes, there's also the dame who did it. Farewell, my Mullen. Faking death seems to be a common trope in the Mullen series. The morbid tales of Dick Mullen. A dark tide turns. Tragedy calls for Dick Mullen. Another one with fake death. And, of course, Dick Mullen, the murderer. In order to catch a murderer, Dick Mullen must become the murderer. <laughs> uh... After all this, you still haven't found the answer to the one question that matters. Oh. Who is Dick Mullen? Who is Dick Mullen? Your quick eye notices a small caterpillar crawling across the spine of a book. The title reads, Dick Mullen and the Mistaken Identity. What do we have here? Mistaken Identity. A worn paperback from Dick Mullen's classic, Hard Boiled Phase. The premise seems to be that Dick Mullen is framed for the murder of his best friend and has just a few days to prove his innocence. Does this relate to me somehow? Hmm, why does this speak to me? Could it be the motifs of unstable identities and shocking betrayals? Hmm, no, it's gotta be something else. Maybe? Perhaps you're drawn to the dark and noirish atmosphere. No, that's not it either. Is it because the smoking dame in the slinky red dress on the cover is giving you a hard on? <laughs> All right, that's definitely it. What? No, that's not what's happening. Yes, it is. The bulge in your pants is embarrassingly obvious. Oh, it is? Relax. It's not that bad. Also, this means your blood flow is returning to normal. Good news, really. Huh? Something the matter, detective? <laughs> uh, nope. All good here. 
The lieutenant nods. You think you detect the faintest trace of a grin on Jesus. his face. But you can't say for certain. Let's leave. Leave. <laughs> okay. What else? What else? A quaint picture book brochure. Very colorful. It's a tome of fascist magic. Rather candid. Fascist magic. The plaque on the shelf reads, Biographies of Famous People. You see a large variety of names, none of which ring a bell. Stor uh, Storky, anything of note in this shelf? I would say... The Greatest Innocence. Yes, most certainly. It's an important educational tool delving into the depths of history, religion, and their relation to innocentic power. Uh, who or what is an innocence? A very influential historical figure. But surely I don't have to tell you that. You're a law officer, and law officers have at least some education. Hmm... The book is also very daring. The author aims to re-examine the universal understandings of the innocentic system, creating a fresh vantage point and a shift in the tired order of things. I thought it was about which of these innocences is the coolest and greatest. Greatest. Perhaps for a layman, deep analysis is necessary to peel back the multi-layered meanings. Hmm. Okay. Do her words seem vague and abstract to you? Uh, yes it does. So you recommend it? Certainly! It's prudent for a person to have at least an elementary understanding of history and society. Imagine the chaos we'd be in otherwise. Okay. You feel like you should get this one. Definitely. It's important somehow. There's something personal inside. The Greatest Innocence. Hmm. Uh, Browsing through all the books with all their names makes your head spin. None of these seem important or relevant. It's all just vapid egoism. Egoism. Suddenly, a particularly odd title catches your eye. It reads, High Speed Love, The Tragic True Love Story of Jacob Irv and Alfie Delatraz by one Cecilia Averbrook. Uh, what's it about? High Speed Love chronicles the romance between two of the finest tip-top tournay racers in history. One of them is the madcap driver, Jacob Irv. His blonde mane graces the cover. Next to Irv's life story, you see a slim biography of an Occidental rock star called The Anti-Star. He's famous for shooting morphine into one of his eyeballs and uh, cocaine into the other. Uh, uh, ouch. Okay. Next to that, Rivasholian radio personality Guillaume Bevy stands in front of a rundown drug den. He's a permanent fixture on Channel 8, reporting on real life crime and ruining cops' days. Hmm. I really must insist you buy one of the books. Reading them is not for free. Do still browse though, but not too long. Dang. I'm sorry, I did not mean to rush you. You are browsing. Go ahead. Take your time. Time is commerce. I will. I will take my time. Ooh, what's this? Several maps have been attached to a bulletin board hidden inside the alcove. They're held up by small pins. The board has come loose from one corner. Ooh, a map. The maps look old and faded. Your eye catches a map of Insulinda, a map of Revachol, and a map of Martinez. Look at the map of Insulinda. This large map displays archipelagos. You see a constellation of small dots on the light blue emptiness of the Insulindic Ocean. The largest in the northeast is La Caillou. You are here. Another far away in the southwest, Seminese Islands, Ile de Fantôme. Mm, Le Caillou. 
This is where we are, where Revachol is. What else? Ozon, Laurentide, Fas Alamir, Archipelagos, North Arcade Islands. All just specks of dust on the vastness of the Insulindic. On the edges of the map, the color fades into a blur of dotted lines, black and white. Ooh. I wonder if we can go to these places later on. Disintegrating into mathematics. Mathematics. In the northeast, a dust mite stands on the north coast of Caillou in a bookstore. It's you. <laughs> um, squid first. Can you see cities on the islands? You can. On Caillou, Revachon, a single black star. On Ozon, Fondelier, and Vimandu. On Archipelagos, Croyan Moran, Villiers. On Seminine, Oldivai, and on Laurentide, Deora of the Seven Seas. Ooh, okay. 850 million people live on these little dots, an oceanic world of culture and commerce torn apart by history. Uh, look at the edges. The ocean breaks apart into a tangle of cosines and azimuths, all pointing into pale nothingness. Windy is the North Azimuth. Grad is the northeast azimuth. Samara is the east azimuth. Seo is the west azimuth. Isolas, they're called. <laughs> Connections to other worlds, words past the Insulindian, unknown to you. You only know you've never been there. Hmm. You have little idea what they are. Distant stars, gods, but looking at them makes you feel almost non-existent. Whatever they are, the Isolas are immeasurably large compared to you and very, very far away. Ooh. Perhaps they are gods, gods of distance and outer dust. Gods of distance. Uh, river shawl. The north coast of a verdant island is shattered by the delta of a river. It is the river Esperance. Countless bridges put the shards back together, connecting city blocks to river islands. La Delta says a great artificial heart in the center, teeming with life forms and construction. La Delta. Okay. To the east, rolling hillsides, Le Jardin, Stella Marie, the suburbs of Saint Baptiste, swallowed up into the mega city. They sound rich to you. This is Rivershall East. And west of the river? Kudon. It's somewhere to live. Not bad. Then there's Jamrock. It's bad. People shouldn't live there, but they do. Then Forberg. It's almost as bad. And much larger than Coal City. It's the worst. Oh. So places in the West are the um the not so good ones, I guess. And Martinez? It's so small you can't even see it on the map. No, wait. There it is. North of Jamrock, the strip of coast next to the Greater Rivershall Industrial Harbour. It looks downright despondent. It's almost coal city, to be honest. Hmm. Coal's almost coal city. Okay. No, this is somewhere to be. This is all you have, but it's still something. Streets and sodium lights, the sky, the world, you're still alive. Yep. Um, uh, Martinez. It's not really a map, it's a tourist thing. A picture postcard with buildings on it, drawn from an isometric perspective. A date in the upper right corner says 48. 48, so uh, three years before now. Still, it's detailed. Could be pretty useful for scouting ahead. 
You see the jagged boxes of an industrial harbor, even the whirling in rags there. Hmm. Storekeep, can I buy these maps? I'm sorry, officer. The map of Martinez is the only one available. The other two are not for sale anymore. And besides, you could scarcely afford them. Oh? They're quite valuable, though they might not look it. The map of Martinez is 90 cents, though. <sighs> ah. Still not enough. Why is the one of Martinez so cheap? That old thing? It's an out-of-date map of a tourist location that never was nor came to be. Never was nor came to be. From when some design studio people tried to spruce the place up four or five years ago. They also renovated the horse statue, set up those coin-operated viewers and designed the new street lamps. The place does not look like a successful tourist trap, does it? Hmm, what happened then? They didn't get that far, for some reason. A shame the project never got going. Would be nice if someone fixed Martinez up. All these ruins are bad for business. Ooh, steel? Oh, wait, but I have Kim with me right now. Hmm, so maybe if I go back later without Kim, I guess, then we can, I don't know. We can do this. Ooh, interesting. Okay. This bookstore is not strictly about crime, romance, and biographies of famous people. There's also a wide range of paranatural literature. Uh, storekeep, what books are these? Hum, sir, please, no browsing in that shelf. That wisdom is not for free. Huh? What? I can't have you end up, like, opening a police store next door and stealing my customers. Oh no! What do you mean? Uh, look through the shelves. Amidst the various books, you find one written by someone named Matthias W. Dundas. It's about wholeness, unity, balance. Okay. These three things are very important to the working class mind. The point of the book, and many others on this shelf, is to give people medicinal advice in situations where they don't have access to paid health services. Medicinal advice? Um, homemade, homemade remedies, maybe? Uh, how does that work? It serves platitudes while also telling everyone that traditional medicine, the kind people don't have access to and which costs more than this book, is garbage and would only give you cancer anyway without even curing your cold or anything. Okay. Wholeness, unity, balance, on the other hand, can basically take care of anything. Though it is important to note, when it's up to your mind to heal yourself, then it's because of your mind that you're ill in the first place. Hmm. It's all in the mind. Uh, does the book say anything else? The book features chapters on topics such as how to find magnesium. It even lists plants you can harvest magnesium from. How to continue drinking if you're an alcoholic who has destroyed his liver. And there's even a chapter on the ancient Serais tradition of using duck gold bladder preservatives to treat and prevent sexually transmitted diseases. Pre and post factum apply. Nothing worth buying. Huh. Very, very unconventional. Leave. Another boring book just discarded here. Anything else? No? Okay. Okay, we're done browse- Ooh. Everyone knows the most interesting thing about fascists was their magic. Okay.
Uh. I'll go back later. Okay, goodbye. Hmm? Pick dialogue options to begin with hold on or wait to gain to gain additional information before the conversation moves on. Okay. Ooh. Who are you? Hello. Hello again, sweetie. I see you've met up with your colleague. Yes. The lieutenant nods politely. Wait, who's sweetie? Uh, who's sweetie? Why, you are, officer. Oh? I'm no sweetie. Look at me. You're a handsome man, officer, with your mustache and your chiseled jaw and that silly dimple on your chin. Uh, thanks, I guess. Dimple or not, I'm a bitter man. The years have taken their toll. Take heart, officer. You're still a man in your prime. Am I? You must forgive me. I'm getting so scatterbrained. I completely forgot to introduce myself. I'm Lena. My husband Morel and I are staying with our friend Gary just down the street, but I come here for tea when they're away. Ooh. Lena... Morel and Gary. This Lena is wacky enough for the Motley crew. What? <laughs> Hire her on the spot. Uh... <laughs> sweetie needs money. Do sweeties get money? Are you okay? I'm very sorry I crashed into you earlier. I don't know what got into me. Oh, oh I'm perfectly alright. I'm more worried about you. What was that? Oh, yeah. yeah, what was that? From where I was standing, it looked like you were about to pull out two guns, but drew out two... Uh, um, birdies instead. Oh, hey. Well, I I'm glad you weren't injured. <laughs> birdies. Uh, you seem to be in a chair. Yes, dear. Uh, I'm a paraplegic. Okay. A paraplegic is someone with limited or no ability to use the lower half of their body. Paraplegia is caused by spinal cord injuries, like falling from a great height, or a grenade explosion. <laughs> you concluded this? <laughs> hmm, a grenade? Did you fight in a war? No, dear. I'm not quite that old. Although, I was injured in the line of duty. Hmm. Were you a mountaineer? Nothing so glamorous, dear. Though when I was young, I dreamt of planting the Revacholian flag on some figurative peak. Um, what did you do then? I was a training and development manager at a rapidly expanding mail order shoe company. Okay. You'd think it would be a safe job, but I had to be everywhere and, well, once I happened to be under some faulty scaffolding. Ooh. I was lucky. This was almost 20 years ago, and I was compensated exceptionally well. One can only dream of such payoffs nowadays. Hmm. I'm sorry, it was rude of me to mention the wheelchair. Let's move on. That's quite alright. I'm used to people asking questions. I know they're thinking about it anyway. How would you like to roll with me? Yeesh. Uh, I don't know if you noticed, but I don't know where I am or what I'm doing. Or anything. Yes, officer. You look rather dazed. Like a stunned fox. But surely things can't be that bad. Hmm. I drank so hard, I forgot literally everything. <laughs> oh my. Oh my. You know where we are, right? Uh, whirling in rags cafeteria? It was on my keys. 
We're in... Rivershaw. That's right. In a hostel called the Whirling in Rags, to be precise. Honestly, I don't know diddly squat about Revachol. What kind of place is this? How would I even begin to tell you? Revachol is the most beautiful city in the world. Oh? We're fortunate to be here, you and I. I haven't seen very many other cities personally, but everyone says so. Revachol is a rare jewel. This city used to rule the world, though it has seen better days. Hmm. There's a pause as she studies your expression. You must look quite lost. Speaking of history, you know what year it is, yes? <laughs> All I know is we are approaching, approaching the end times. Spring of 51. That's right, dear. How splendid. Huh? Here, take this pen. Knowledge should always be rewarded. Ooh, I got a pen. Thank you. Her relief is palpable. She was getting pretty worried about you there. But now she relaxes her shoulders. Okay. I can tell that this is taxing for you, so I'll just ask one more question. What regime are we living under? What mode of government? Oh, no. Uh... We're living under the cop regime. Oh. I'd like to think it's the dictatorship of the proletariat. But something tells me it's not. Oh, sweetie. It's really not. There used to be people who thought that way. Other people who wanted those things, but... They all went extinct. Oh? Revachol is a zone of control led by an alliance of foreign powers called the Coalition. We have almost no government of our own, and certainly no dictatorship of the proletariat. Zone of control led by the coalition. No government so on their of their own. Ooh. But they still have cops. If there's no government, how come there are cops? Oh dear. And you were doing so well. There aren't any cops in Rivishal, not in the traditional sense. The status of law enforcement has been a complicated matter since the revolution. Hmm. Okay. But we should stop for today, sweetie. You look like you need a break. Besides, I'm not the best person to explain the big things to anyone. She's scared now. She's realized you really are brain damaged. Huh? Hmm. What is the rev half half light? What is half light again? Half light. Threaten people. High strong investigators. Half-Light is your fight-or-flight response. It, it enables you to sense the way situations are about to turn. It injects palpable fear into your heart. Fear that urges you to act before it's too late to act ever again. Fear that makes you frighten others. The aggression that lets you squeeze every last drop of the information out of a witness. At higher levels, Half-Light makes you ultra-attuned to the world. Perpetual fear of your own shadow of someone else's name or scent. You'll be ready always to pounce and physically interrogate passersby. At low levels, you'll find your survival instinct is lacking. Your methods limp-wristed. Those who respect violence will not respect you. Oh wait! 
Do I have skill points? Uh, let's do... Let's do Esprit de Corps. Cup culture, okay. What is the revolution you mentioned? A defeat, I'm afraid. The people of this archipelago tried to build something new, something different. The rest of the world didn't like it, so they came and ended it. This was 42 years ago. Oh, 42 years ago. Hmm. What does that have to do with there not being any cops? It has something to do with everything. I really don't know how to explain it better. Mm. So, how did I do? You were doing quite well up until the end there. It does look like you're having trouble remembering things. History and places. Remembering reality in a word. It's very odd. Mm. Very odd indeed. A sigh. The lieutenant buries his nose in his notebook. But maybe a fresh set of eyes is what the world needs. And while I'm no doctor, such bouts of amnesia are often temporary. So I, I wouldn't worry too much. Who could tell me more? Someone more educated in sweeping matters. Maybe you should ask. No. I'm not an encyclopedia. I won't be a guide either. I'm a detective. Okay. Of course. Then I don't know. Someone rich, maybe? Wealthy people are educated. Though I don't know where you would find a wealthy person in Martinez. Hmm. Wealthy people. Do we know a wealthy person by now? Get a reality lowdown. You have no idea where you are. Alina encourage you to ask others to explain the world to you in greater detail. Perhaps try a rich person? Hmm. That's a good point. This doesn't look like rich central. Mm -hmm. So the rich... Uh, what, how should I say this? The rich area is on the huh, east, I guess. Um, not sure, but okay. <laughs> How'd you like to roll with me? Whatever do you mean? Oh, <laughs> I think I was thinking of the lyrics to a song. <laughs> Wanna roll with me? I want you to be my wheelchair partner in fighting crime, helping people, catching sequence killers. Sequence killers? Oh my. But I think you already have a partner, sweetie. Mm. Can we add one more? A partner who needs you to get back to helping the people of Martinez. <laughs> Kim, of course. I forgot I had you. <laughs> I know, I know, but there are also side mysteries. Sequence killers and forays, forays, forays into the paranormal. I can assure you with absolute certainty, there are no sequence killings taking place in Martinez. Are you sure? Now, gentlemen, no need to squabble. I wouldn't be of much use to you anyway, sweetie. Why? Three heads are better than two. Thank you, but... Martinez isn't the most wheelchair accessible place you see. I'd slow you down. Well, we have a car. Perhaps another time. Oh. Do we get access to our own car, maybe? Ooh, that would be nice. <laughs> sweetie needs money. Do sweeties get money? Oh, sweetie, I heard your conversation with the manager about your financial troubles. 
When do you get your next paycheck? Ah, oh, this is low. <laughs> what is a paycheck? I haven't seen any paychecks. You must be joking. Although our pay does sometimes feel like a joke. Yeah, it does. <laughs> it's not easy to assert your right to a decent living wage when you don't have a strong union behind you. Maybe you should talk to Everard, the union leader. Everard, huh? Well, we need to talk to him anyways. For the interview. Interesting idea. This Everard sounds powerful. Maybe you can wrangle some coins out of his pocket. Ooh, maybe. Okay. Oh no, I'm so sorry I don't have money for you. If, if there's anything else I can do for you, just ask. Okay, uh, maybe later then. Of course, dear. Good luck with your case. Okay, bye. Ooh, kitchen's open. But... Hmm. We can't steal his ID because we have Kim. Maybe later. Whoa. What is this? That sugary black rum stain on the counter makes you teary-eyed with joy. It's almost touching how syrupy and sticky it is. How long have you been up already? Uh, not now. Oh, excuse me. Do you have something better to do than lust for sweet syrupy rum and lemonade? With a twist of lemon? Maybe lime? Maybe who cares? Just rum? Maybe I should lick it before I go. Yeah, man. Yeah. Your mesolimbic reward pathway is going wild at the thought. Lick it, lick it, lick it. Your receptors chant. <laughs> huh. Electrochemistry. Let me check what... What electrochemistry... Yeah. Party planet. Okay. Cool for high flyers, party enthusiasts, cops who need lightning. <laughs> Electrochemistry is the animal within you, the beast longing to be unleashed to indulge and enjoy. It enables you to take drugs with fewer negative side effects. Also enables you to better investigate lurid matters. If you need to understand a chemical breakdown or talk to someone blasted out of their mind, or understand sexual dynamics, electrochemistry is there to guide you. At high levels, electrochemistry makes you a man of unrestrained pleasure, uh, an unrepentant Lothario who leers at people with a bottle of speed and a plastic bandy straw in either hand. But with a low electrochemistry, you'll be too innocent to be effective. Without a working knowledge of drugs and sex, the city will be difficult to understand. Ooh. I guess we need this for uh, uh, narcotics based, I don't know, quests, missions, tasks. Hmm. Don't lick it, man. <laughs> what happened, man? You used to be cool. Go get your boring normal person drink then. Maybe later then. Get your drink on and your act together. Find booze and drink cups. Okay. Sure. And who are you? It's all about the money, you know. Hmm. Okay. Time to head to my room. Kim tries not to look at your broken down bathroom door. Kim also tries not to look at the pile of tape viscera on the carpet. Or the weird suitcase on the hat rack. Or the potted plant dying in the corner. But it's all just too morbid to ignore. Yeah. The man is finding it hard not to trip on the tape. And not to send any of the bottles rolling across the floor. 
where unidentifiable sludge makes it hard for him to breathe. Smells of vomit in here. <laughs> I did it. My way. This is where the magic happens. And by that you mean crimes against humanity? <laughs> I defied bourgeoisie morality in here. I defied it hard. <laughs> well, crimes against myself anyway. I have no idea what that means. <laughs> he looks toward the exit longingly. Okay, well. The bed is cold and not particularly inviting, but it's yours. The sheets look awful. No time to rest yet. Let's... Let's watch A mirror out. hangs on the bathroom wall. In it, your face, adorned with the expression. The expression. Dig deep into your mind to locate the source of the expression. Oh, plus one. Heard about the bed. Oh, oh. Like the rest of huh? you, it comes from a bad place somewhere in the past. That's all you know for now. Hmm. Okay. Interfacing. Use your chain cutters to fix the faucet. Stop steam from fogging up the mirror. Ooh, okay. Let's, uh, let's equip the... Chain cutters. How do we? Right. Oh, okay. All right. Oh, it does. It does update. Hmm. A mirror hangs on the bathroom wall. In it, um. your face, adorned with... The faucet is quite terribly mangled, but you just might be able to twist its parts into place. Nice. You handle the chain cutters deftly, applying just enough pressure. The faucet regains a recognizable shape. The steam stops. Hell yeah. Told you that you needed those chain cutters. Everything is connected. Everything has a purpose. Everything has a purpose. The mirror begins to clear slowly without you having to wipe it. Hmm. Okay. Wait. I thought we were going to clean our shop. Ah, oh, once you you can have some privacy. Okay. So when does Kim leave? Hmm. Well, we can talk to Kim about this one. Yes. <laughs> um I want to talk about you. Me? Yes, you. I don't see how my life is pertinent to the investigation. Hmm. Um we'll work better together if we have more rapport. Hmm, that's a fair point. Alright, for the good of the investigation, what do you want to know? Ooh. Uh, Kim, you're wearing a revolutionary air brigade jacket, aren't you? What? This? It's just seasonal clothing. And those look like airman pants. Good for storing tools in. Where is this going? <laughs> you see, Kim, I have this place in my head where I develop new ideas and connections. Interesting. I think it's called <laughs> brain. 
It's no mere brain. <laughs> oh. No, normal people don't have this. It's like a my laboratory, a spiritual R&D division. No, a pallet. No, better yet, a painter's atelier of concepts. Okay, art club. Okay, I can vibe with that. Um. Okay, indeed. And in this atelier, is it atelier? Atelier. I have realized that you harbor some kind of sentiment toward the Revolutionary Air Brigade. I do not harbor a sentiment for Revolutionary Air Brigades in particular. Uh, just Air Brigades then? Okay, I wanted to become an aerostatic pilot. Then I turned 10 and realized we no longer have an Air Force. Oh. Are you sure the Revolutionary has got nothing to do with this? Absolutely nothing. Okay. The revolutionary must have added a little luster to it for a ten-year-old Kitsuragi. He will never admit it, though. Hmm. Okay. Uh, well, thank you. My mind is satisfied. Good. You don't look like other people around here. Oh, wait. What is this? <laughs> is he talking about his um, ethnicity, maybe? Will, he, uh, will this offend Kim? Hmm. Okay. That's because I'm half Seolite, or quarter. My father's father was from Seoul. So was my grandmother, but from my mother's side. It's not an interesting topic. Hmm. What is Seoul? It's a part of the world, officer. A geopolitical entity and a geographic division. I told you it wouldn't be interesting. Well, okay. Seo is a protectionist, isolationist, pan isolary state west of the Insulindian Isola. Actually, it's quite interesting. Some would even say mysterious. Ooh. You're only making it sound uninteresting. I still want to know about I still want to know more about Seo. You're barking up the wrong tree. I don't speak a word of Seolite. I've never met either one of my grandparents, and I've never been to Seoul. I'm a regular Revacholier. Revacholier. A point of pride to him. You're, you're wearing glasses. That's correct. You feel a slight urge to put the lieutenant down for this. But you can't quite muster enough testosterone. <laughs> Uh, glasses are cool, I guess. Are they? They are mostly just cumbersome. Tell me a secret about yourself. No. Ask again. Your brain sends the signal to your lips, but they refuse the order. Something is paralyzing them. You're pretty sure it has something to do with the lieutenant's eyebrow. Okay, all right, all right. It's like you're locked down. What's happening to me? Something the matter, detective? Uh... What's going on? It's like you're a puppet in his hands. Ooh. Okay. The lieutenant relaxes his eyebrow, and you seem to regain control of yourself. Damn, Kim. Uh, do you ever talk with yourself? What do you mean? Uh, you know, when you're thinking, do you ever have conversations with, like, your brain? I have no idea what you're talking about. Mm. The lieutenant's conceptualization skills must be rather rudimentary. The lieutenant is a police officer of the old school. His concerns are material and extrinsic. Material and extrinsic. But this isn't an old school case. I get it. You're one of those old school detectives. <laughs> um, so you're saying your brain never just chimes in with, avi with advice or warnings or anything? I can't say that it does, no. When I need to think, I just use my notebook. Hmm, okay. The lieutenant produces his familiar 
Nemo Technique A6 and idly thumbs through a few pages. We all have our different mediums. His is written. Okay. Uh, that's all for Good. now. Let's change the subject. Tell me about the case again. What do you want to know? Ah, here it is. Now that we've inspected the scene, I want to know more about this pissing competition you mentioned. What's there to say? It's just stupidity. What kind of stupidity? The cop kind. Our precincts can't decide if Martinez is part of Jamrock or the Industrial Harbor. Yours or mine, as if we somehow own parts of the city. Typical street gang mentality. So we've let the Union make a mockery of law enforcement here. And now it's come to its natural conclusion. Ah, so this is a struggle over who runs Martinez. Well, sort of. It's less a matter of who gets to police Martinez than who has to. It's an orphan district, in other words. Hmm. Who gets to police Martinez? Mm hmm, mm hmm, okay. I think the dispatch desk just told both our stations about the hanging. There was quite a brouhaha at the 57th, I can tell you that. Time to settle it, they said. Cop off. But I assure you, I am not their finest or toughest with 102 cases solved. What I am is least interested in a pissing competition. Okay. So he volunteered to represent the 57th, but not out of competitiveness. On the contrary. Somewhere in your mind hangs a dark green blackboard. There are two columns. One says, cases solved. The other, confirmed kills. Hmm. Close your eyes. The rows are endless. Ooh. Look for Precinct 41. Jean Vitmer, Judith Minot, a special consultant. What was his name? Then the rows degrade into green nothingness. So Jean is my my partner. My precinct partner, huh? Judith Minot. Special consultant. Hmm. Your brothers have left you. Ha. <laughs> Um, I wonder what this says about me, that I was sent by my station. Hmm. He raises an eyebrow, thinking it best to let you make the next move. It's all part of the master plan, you see. How? I am a highly experimental cop, but if I am right, this is... Outre? <laughs> Even by my standards. Hmm. Maybe this? I'm a, I'm a disco cop. Party cop. Really? I arrive at the scene three days early, drink myself to oblivion, fully re-immerse myself in this reality, and then work the case from an angle so so crescent fresh it produces never before seen results. Not only for criminal criminology but for the human mind. Ooh Maybe. It can't be that. But ooh, but part of him sort of wants to believe what you said. Hmm. I am a notoriously difficult to work with wonder kind with extremely unorthodox methods. Oh? Wouldn't that be something? And who could say it's not true? If you really don't remember anything, how would you know? We should move. Uh, what's special about Martinez? Martinez? Nothing. It's just a puddle at the end of some drain pipe. No one cares about this place. They care about sports. Most of our colleagues don't even know how to get here. North of the interchange doesn't exist. Hmm. 
For some reason, I thought you had a hundred and four solved cases. Well, technically. The official record keeper has been known to double count murder suicide. Double count? A common accounting gimmick used to inflate precinct stats. So you're still a good cop, right? I'm good enough for this case. I'm not here to compete. I came because I had to. My fellow officers, the sergeants in particular, would have made this scene into a circus. So you volunteered to spoil it? Yes. I'm an unrepentant spoil sport. <laughs> okay. Alright. Yes, it's a wholly pointless matter. Forget I ever mentioned it. Ooh. Why did the 41st send me? Ooh. Logic. Plus one, Sylvie suicide jokes. Huh. Okay. Because you're the best qualified. No, that doesn't seem right. Hmm. No, that makes sense. I'm exceedingly qualified. Am I? <laughs> if you're so well qualified, why can't you remember why you were sent? Anyway, don't keep the lieutenant waiting. Okay, okay, all right. <laughs> you seem to be following me. Excuse me? Uh, nothing, just an observation. You have a... A distinctive way of walking. If I were to walk in front of you, we would surely collide. <laughs> what do you mean distinctive? I hope you don't take this the wrong way. It's just a collegial observation. In the 57th, we call it the Jamrock Shuffle. Officers sure. from Jamrock's 41st precinct tend to move a bit erratically. How's that? They say it's a scene-clearing technique developed by one of your lieutenants for gathering evidence. It's erratic, yet thorough. Prioritizes containers. I'm not sure I follow. Yes, but containers contain things, shiny things. They're interesting. Ah. Uh. Jam, <laughs> Jam Rock Shuffle. Okay. You kidding me? Why containers? I don't know. Containers contain, I guess. I'm making assumptions. We should move on. Hmm. Passing along frivolous interdepartmental stereotypes is not usually his oeuvre. He regrets bringing it up. Okay. Well, let's talk again later. What do we have? Oh, Kuno. Uh, Gart, right? We can ask Gart. Find a bottle of alcohol, put it in your hand. <laughs> Magic will happen by its own. Something tells you it will take some time. You could start by identifying the bullet so you know the weapon that shot it. Keep your eyes... After that, keep your eyes open and be patient. Alright. Um, do we have anything else? Oh. So these are... These are all finished. Hmm. Unlock a new slot to research the thought. Ah. How do we do that? Hmm. Okay. Hmm. Kind green ape pen. Oh. <laughs> All right. 
pen with a green ape head on one end. The ape has closed its eyes, a kind expression adorning its face. It seems to be meditating. Alright. Let's, um... Let's talk to Gart. 